right, welcome back to the Fast Break. As you already know, I am your host, Drew Ambergy. How are we doing today? I am joined by my boy, Nick. He's going to start us off. We are covering games. Of course, like always, i got three guests joining us to cover up some games from the weekend. These ones are all from Sunday evening because there was no NBA games Monday. I'm presuming it's because the NCAA championship was on Monday night. Shout out to Kansas. Congratulations on the natty. Um, and But today, I'm going to start off with my boy Nick, and we are going to be talking Nuggets and Lakers. So we got one team that's obviously battling through injuries, staying afloat, led by the potential MVP Jokic, while we got another team that is not battling through their injuries and is quickly falling off a cliff in the Los Angeles Lakers. But I figure they're two very good teams to talk about, so that's why we're addressing this matchup today. So let's go a little recap of the game. Lakers started off actually pretty strong. Honestly, it was looking like the old AD out there. I mean, honestly, those, those knees looked fine. Russell Westbrook was making explosive plays, and, you know, they were up nine uh, with at the six-minute mark of the second quarter. And you know what? You know, Lakers fans were kind of like, hey, we might be back. But Aaron Gordon, honestly, who had a really good game for the Nuggets, started kind of going off there towards the end of the second, into the third. And, honestly, he just couldn't miss from three-point range. He was kind of unbelievable. Shout, shout out to him for walk, working on his range. At just a one-point game going into the fourth, kind of a little back-and-forth third quarter, Denver slowly pulled away. You know, Jokic was just making plays. Aaron Gordon was playing really well. Will Barton hitting timely shots. And then, of course, Bones Highland playing really well as a rookie out there. And they kind of slowly stretched out to make it an 11-point win for the Nuggets. They ended up getting it done 129-118 in the land of Los Angeles. Now, obviously, the big storyline, no LeBron in this game. Would he have made up an 11-point difference? Probably, so you got to take that into account. But still a good win for the Nuggets who are, you know, vying for playoff position. And, man, this one almost buries the Lakers. A uh, couple of quick uh, stats here for you. The Nuggets, Aaron Gordon, like I said, dropping 24 points the other night. Uh, Will Barton, 25 for him. He's been a really nice role player for them, help keeping them afloat. And then Jokic. The potential MVP, possibly back-to-back, -back, uh, dropping 38 points, 18 rebounds, and 6 assists, which was just another insane stat line uh, for the reigning MVP for him. Lakers, Anthony Davis dropped a nice 28-9. and nine. He's been playing well since he got back. And then Westbrook, a great game for him as well, too. 27 points, 10 rebounds, 7 assists, you know, almost his classic triple-double. And then shout-out Melo, putting in 17 points as well, too. Nick, what are your thoughts kind of on this game and, and, and how these teams are too fair, how these teams are faring after this result? I mean, like for the Nuggets, it's pretty much expected that they beat the Lakers. Mm -hmm. uh, I was honestly surprised at how close it was. And the Lakers, minus LeBron, they actually look pretty good. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to lie. Uh, like Davis almost had a triple-double, same with Westbrook, or Westbrook, whatever you want to call him. And they had Mel come off the bench. But I don't know. The Lakers... With that loss, I mean, they're still sitting at that 11 spot, so it's not looking, not looking too good for the dream team or, you know, a super team, if you want to call that. Not even going to make a playing game. Mm -hmm. But kind of going to the Nuggets, they look I think they'll be a pretty dangerous five seed. They're still, like, battling with injuries. Jamal Murray's not out there yet. But, I mean, if Jokic is putting up 38 and 18, I mean, you can't really complain if you're a Nuggets fan. Yeah, and, and they're getting great play out of the role players. <clears throat> and it just goes to show, man, if they had their second and third best player, they'd probably be one of the favorites in the West. Like, man, yeah. if you had DeJounte Murray on this team, I, I just couldn't imagine them not being a top three seed. DeJounte I, Murray plays for the Spurs. Or shoot, shoot, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, my bad, my bad. Um, but if, you know, if they were fully healthy, I would imagine they would be a top three seed right now. I just, it's, it's just been a tough year for them as far as injury-wise, but Jokic is just kind of keeping them afloat. And you know what? If he gets his second MVP out of it, you can't consider it necessarily a wasted season. Yeah. But let's talk about Jokic. Now, obviously, another insane stat line. And, you know, kind of a lot of the advanced stats, win shares, plus, minus, are just nuts for Jokic. Do you think he should be the back-to-back -back MVP this year? Uh, I think it's – I personally think it's going to be him. I think it's going to come down to him and, him and Embiid. Uh, which is kind of crazy that there's two, like, 
seven foot centers in the MVP conversation, uh, but they their play style is pretty similar. And Jokic, even though he's like you know seven foot and is a center, he's bringing the ball up the court most of the yeah. time and is the one facilitating the plays and such. But I mean, you can't really like argue over like 38 and 18 against I mean a struggling LA team. But even Anthony Davis, Anthony Davis was on him most of the night. And Anthony Davis is one of the more elite players in the league. Mm -hmm. But he's just, like, dominant in every facet of the game. He can, like, score inside, score outside, can score off the dribble for being as big as he is, and can, like, dominate the glass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ag agreed. I mean, putting up 38 on a guy who is an amazing defender. Now, obviously, like, as I was watching this game, slowly throughout the game, he kind of started – to see uh, Davis like slowly kind of slow down, you know, yeah. it, it just, like he wasn't bouncing out of the gym like he was in the first quarter. Doesn't obviously look fully right, so necessarily. And I mean, at the end of the day, not many people are sto stopping Jokic anyway. No. Like you can be the best defender in the world, he's still probably going to get at least twenty-five to thirty yeah. on you. So, no disrespect to that, but yeah, he he still looked amazing considering he had Anthony Davis on him, who, who I'm, I'm not sure like if he want, needs to prove a point or anything like that, or if he's kind of, like, on his way out the door. We'll see how it goes. I mean, we're looking at, like, potential trade talks for him right now. Yeah. Just because he can't really hold up. And I kind of saw throughout the game he started to even slow down. It's not yeah. even, like, a game-to-game -game thing. It's like a it's like a quarter-to-quarter -quarter with, like, how fresh and young he's going to look. So definitely a little bit of concern there. At this point, with them potentially not even making the play-in tournament, I don't know if they're even just going to play in the last, like, two, three games yeah. of the season. <laughs> just avoid any injury that could happen. Mm. They might just shut him down. I don't know. Espe yeah. <clears throat> especially if LeBron's not going to play uh, until the end of the year. Hopefully he gets back soon. Maybe they make the 10 seed for them. Tough one for the Lakers. They're probably going to have to make some changes going into next year. I mean, they're going to have to clean house after – like building together one of the of like all the superstars they got LeBron, AD, Russell Westbrook, and Carmelo Anthony, and they're sitting at an 11 seed. There's like some's got a. I saw an update today on like ESPN or something that potential uh, Vogel is going to be done by the end of the year. Yeah, they've been throwing Vogel kind of under the bus all season, yeah. which is I think honestly totally unfair. I mean, from Frank Vogel's like in his defense, like you put together a team that like doesn't work together. You got rid of all your good defenders. And well, I mean, obviously LeBron and AD are still great defenders, but they weren't leaving. You got rid of all your good perimeter defenders. Yeah. Like the NBA, for what everybody wants to say about like they don't play defense, yes, they do. They do yeah. play defense, and when you have good defenders, it makes a really big difference yeah. in the games. I mean, getting rid of Caruso, I mean, even KCP yeah. was out there hustling. Um, they cleaned house you know, all their – Kuzma, like, say what you will players. about him, that kid, that kid tries his butt off every second of the game so they lost a lot of effort and defense and that's one of the biggest thing that's hurt them this year because obviously they can score I mean LeBron's averaging over 30 points a game Davis is a walking bucket as well too it's dominant inside but if you can't stop anybody it doesn't really matter speaking of that though let's talk on at least a little bit of a highlight for this Lakers season LeBron is now uh, averaging 30.27 30.3 points a game give or take you never know uh, depends on the game, obviously, with point whatever. But he's leading the or he's, he's about to win the scoring title if he plays enough games. Do you think that that should be enough for LeBron to make first team all NBA? Because most of the time, you know, your scoring champion does make first team all NBA, but most of the time your scoring champ isn't on one of the worst eight teams in the league. Yeah. So, like, what, what are your thoughts on, like, what all NBA team LeBron should make? Well, LeBron, he's had one of his – you could say one of his better years that he's had. I mean, he's in year 19, and he's, like, progressing. <laughs> like, he's still getting better, and he's already been in the league almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. But I just don't think – I think him being on a team with, the, with, his, uh, with his teammates and being an 11, I just don't think it's going to be enough for him to mm -hmm. be able, make that first team because mm -hmm. voters will take into consideration, like, how good the team actually is and mm -hmm. are they going to make the playoffs? Are they a finals, contend finals contender? Like – whatever, but I just don't think it's going to be enough. I think he'll be f uh, for sure lock for second team, no doubt in my mind, but mm -hmm. first team's a little far of a stretch. 
Yeah, I just think because of the offensive side of the ball alone, he's probably going to make that second team. I'd be really surprised if they bumped him down to third team just based on, like, it's LeBron James. <clears throat> like he's he got the, the name with it. He gets it. the benefit of the doubt no matter what. Um, but I just think other forwards in the league, like you got Jason Tatum, you got Kevin Durant, who, I mean, Kevin's only got his team as the eighth seed, but still, like, he's playing out of his mind, and he's arguably the best player in the world. Um, and then Tatum averaging 29 points a game. And then honestly playing, like, elite-level defense as well, too. Like, he's kind of in that conversation for first team all defense. He might make the second team all defense as well, too. So I think, like, obviously if it was just based on offense, LeBron would be probably a lock for that yeah. first team. But you've got to take in consideration both sides of the ball. And I think, honestly, right now, not trying to be a homer, but I think Jason Tatum would be my first team all NBA. Just the way he's playing. I mean, he's fifth in the MVP race right now. And, I mean, it's kind of up to that, what position do you want guys at? You know, mm -hmm. if they go positionless on that first team and then you got Giannis, Jokic, and Embiid on there, then it makes it a little bit trickier, especially with, like, some of the point guard seasons we've been seeing, um, you know, jaw and whatnot. And then if that pushes other guys down to second team, then you could potentially see LeBron on the third team, yeah. which would be kind of crazy with such an amazing, you know, offensive season. But that'll just be interesting to see. I think he makes second team right now. But uh, good thoughts on that one. All right. Uh, thank you so much, my friend Nick. He's always, you know, he's starting to be a regular on this show. <laughs> love it. Always love having you on, bro. So just to wrap it up, Nuggets 129, Lakers 118. This keeps that Lakers in that dangerous 11 spot right now, potentially not making the playoffs. Nuggets right now floating above having to be in that play-in tournament. So we'll see how that goes. Only a few games left in the season. That'll be exciting. All righty. Stay tuned. I got another guest for you coming up after the break. Black is white and gray is blue. It's all fading away. All right. Welcome back to the Fast Break. I am now joined by my friend Danny Flynn. How are we doing today, sir? I'm doing great, Drew. How are you? I'm great. I'm just peachy out here. Me and him are going to talk some hoops, obviously. We are going to be talking the Heat and the Raptors today. So we got all the way up north uh, versus all the way down south. Now, but this one was up north, and now they do have fans back in Toronto, which is always nice for them. A little, uh, the COVID is winding down up there, hopefully. I don't know the exact specifications, but we'll see how it goes. Nice to see fans back in these stands. Um, but let's talk about it. I'll recap the game a little bit here for you. We started off, Fred Van Vliet. I mean, the guy out of Wichita State. What are you going to do to stop him? He was on fire. He came out shooting flamethrowers first quarter. He actually broke Kyle Lowry's record for threes in a single season while playing Kyle Lowry. So that was kind of a cool moment up there for him. Congrats to Fred Van Vliet. We always love seeing the short guys that weren't drafted make it in the NBA. Toronto held a slight lead all the way until – Nearly the end of the third quarter, they kind of just kept the heat at a little bit of a distance, four or five points in that range. It stayed super close until the last four to five minutes of the game, which is basically when Miami caught fire from three. I mean, there was a, there was a nice little stretch there where they were not missing from three. You had some Lowry, some Hero, a little bit of everybody getting in there, shooting it from the beyond the arc. And basically that was kind of the end of the game for that. I mean, it was kind of close, and then four to five minutes left, the Heat just slowly pulled away. Uh, Van Bleet was keeping the Raptors close all the way until the end. It wasn't a blowout by any means, but the Heat did walk away with the victory, 114 to 109 up there in Toronto. Oh, another guy for the Heat that was kind of just going off was Max Strauss, mm -hmm. or Struess. Not exactly sure how to say it. He's just kind of been a role player for them that has actually been really solid as of late. He dropped in 35 points last night. Victor Oladipo coming out of nowhere dropping 21 points for the Heat. He looked kind of like the old Vic from back in the day on Sunday night. So that was good to see for him because he had been struggling since he got back. So it was nice to see him kind of catch his feet there. And he was shooting it well from three on the arc. Lowry, you know, going back home, dropped a nice 16 points, six rebounds, 10 assists. Good to see him doing it all over the court. And then, of course, Hero, your probable sixth man of the year with a nice 18 points, nine rebounds, eight assists. What did you think about the Heat's performance last night, Daniel? 
it, w it, was, it was great. It was a great performance by the Heat. Um, I mean, so the Heat have a lot of weapons. They've got Tyler Hero. Th they now have Oladipo stepping into, into his role. Mm -hmm. uh, Kyle Lowry, obviously. In my opinion, they are the deepest team in the East. I think mm -hmm. that, I mean, all across the board, only three players on their roster on Sunday did not enter double figures mm -hmm. scoring. I mean, this is, this is a team that, and, this is a, and they, they played notably without Jimmy Butler, without mm -hmm. P.J. Tucker, without yeah. Gabe Vincent, and, uh, and without Eric Spolster, too, their, their head coach. Uh, he was out on health and safety protocols, so shout out Chris Quinn. Yeah, the sa head sadly coach, the COVID's been creeping back a little bit in, you know, yeah. with the, um, the league. But, uh, yeah, a great game for Miami and really proves like how deep they are mm -hmm. as a team. Uh, and credit to Toronto too. I mean, they played a great game against uh, a potential one seed c coming out of the East. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And uh, I mean, between Siakam and uh, Fred Van Fleet, uh, those two looked great. I think they had 29 apiece. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think a key, a key statistic that, that might have been the difference maker, the Heat had 45 bench points compared to the Raptors' 13 bench mm -hmm. points. So the Heat are getting it done from a lot more different uh, sources than, mm -hmm. than the Raptors are. And, I mean, come playoff time, players get injured. Uh, you're going to need every player on your team performing at basically their best capabilities. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, the Heat, very, uh, very positive game if you're a Heat fan looking at this, uh, seeing at what your yeah. role players can do. Uh, Max Struess. Uh, I think it was 23 points, and all of them were in the second half. Yeah. Uh, the, the guy was on fire. He was part um, of what helped him pull away in that fourth quarter. Yes, the, the, the third quarter turnaround for the Heat. Uh, that, was, that was crazy. A six for, they were 6 for 20 from deep in the first half, and then they turned around and hit 12 of 18 threes in the second mm -hmm. half. I mean, they shot two less threes and made twice the, the threes that they <laughs> yeah. had made previously. I mean, uh, it, it, it was incredibly efficient. Uh, but part of it, I think... The, the Raptors looked a little flat on defense, especially in that second half. Mm. But, um, I mean, if you're just swinging the ball around and quickly getting shots up, they were scoring in transition really well, I thought. They keep yeah. were moving fast. They would, a lot of their points would just come off steals, and they run the break and uh, get opportunities there. So uh, Yeah, their defense really was shutting them down in the second half. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were, they were kind of all over the ball, and, and that's why I kind of switched my – uh, Eastern champion prediction from the Bucks to the Heat because they were doing all of this. You know, they were still in the top three seeds without m like a good good amount of players throughout the entire year. I mean, they have been battling injuries the entire year. They have now won four in a row and are comfortably, you know, with a few games left in the number one seed in the East. They're going to finish mm -hmm. number one seed in the East and they still haven't been fully, fully healthy. Now, they're getting healthier as we go. A couple of these injuries have just been, uh, you know, one or two games here now, though. I, Jimmy Butler's not going to be out for an extended amount of time, so they'll be all right there. He hasn't been necessarily playing super well, but he's a kind of a dog when it comes to the playoffs, so I'm assuming he's going to be back to normal and fine when they get mm -hmm. there. But you hit, you hit the nail on the head there. I mean, the depth is what just kind of blows me away for them. I mean, they can go nine deep with solid players. Mm -hmm. And if Oladipo, if this is the game that kind of gets him going and he's going to be a guy that can get them 15 to 20 points off the bench with Hero, yeah. I mean, that's scary. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, imagine, you know, you're going neck and neck with the Heat and you're in a tie game and then you guys sub your benches in and then you got the sixth man of the year and a guy that used to be an yeah. all-star, yeah. like not too long ago, coming in. So... Oladipo and Harrow coming off the bench is absolutely busted. It's a scary sight. And, and you saw that three from uh, from the logo that Oladipo hit. Yeah. Was, I mean, no. that was basically the dagger. That if he's going to be hitting coffin. those, I mean, it's it's going to be tough for the rest of the league. I mean, that's what, like I said, that's why they're my pick to come out of the East currently. Now, if mm. injuries are still nagging them and, and maybe if they don't have Spolster or something, that kind of changes things. But fully healthy, this is the deepest team, honestly, by far in the NBA of what they just are able to bring off the bench. And, mm -hmm. you know, just a lot of guys that aren't selfish and kind of just want to win a title. You got a lot of guys that, you know, are kind of journeymen, not journeymen, but have been on several teams in the NBA, and they really just want to win a ring. And I don't see any selfishness coming from this team. Now, the Butler thing with the beef with uh, Spolstra a couple weeks ago, I don't know if that's going to continue to be an issue. Nah, it'll, um, it'll wash over the post conference. I, yeah, they're, they're I think I think they're, the I think they're going to be okay. We'll monitor that though, so we'll see about that one. Um, but you know, 
what I touched on just a second ago was was the defense has been unbelievable, and one of the main anchors of that has been Bam Adebayo. Very true. He's in talks of making first team all defense with mm -hmm. how he's been playing. I don't expect him to make the first team. My opinion is that he's going to make the second team, which is fully deserved for him. What do you think? Do you think he has a case for first team all defense? Uh, I, I truly do think that Bam Adebayo, despite missing 25 games this season, has which a chance. Is a significant. It is a significant amount, but I, I, I mean, his unique size, he's 6'9", 7'3", wingspan, uh, the skill set of being able to move like, quickly, laterally, um, and all of this, it allows him to guard positions one through five. It allows him to get up and down the court on, on defense. Uh, we're going to talk about that specifically. Uh, I mean, he can mirror wings and guards on the perimeter. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look up a highlight compilation of Bam. He can I switch mean, on anybody on the court. He disrupts, like, every yeah. scorer in the NBA. Luka Doncic, Trey Young, scorers mm -hmm. that can draw fouls and uh, create, you know, mayhem against anybody. Bam disrupts them. Um, he, he's also an elite shot blocker, obviously, with that wingspan. Um, only two bigs, uh, your favorite, Boston's duo of Al Horford and Robert Williams, have defended more isolations against guards mm -hmm. than, than Adebayo. Uh, on top of that, he switched more ball screens than any other big at 539, and that's 140 picks removed from second place. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's averaging almost a block a game, 1.4 steals, uh, over 10 rebounds. Um, I see what you're saying with with second team. It's a, it's a very competitive. Jared right Jackson now. Jr. leads the Jared league. Jared Jackson Jr. has been playing great. He got Robert Williams in there as well too. Mm -hmm. Now he's missed some games now, but still he was in defensive player of the year considerations mm -hmm. um, as a center forward. So you got to keep that in mind as well too. Who do you like for defensive player of the year this year? <coughs> well, not trying to be a Boston Celtics homer. But I, got a, I got a Celtic, too. I think Marcus Smart yeah. is going to be the first guard since, what was it, Michael Jordan? Gary, Gary Payton, Payton in 96. Gary Payton to win the Defensive Player of the Year award. Because what he has held, he doesn't necessarily have all the individual statistics. Now, he's got great steals. He's decent in blocks. Um, you know, he doesn't have all the advanced statistics, but the percentage he is holding – the man he is defending to is unbelievable. I mean, you're looking at some of the best offensive players in the league shooting like one for six when he is specifically guarding them. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not, sometimes it's tough for him to get the stats because the Celtics switch everything on defense. But what's nice about that is they have Robert Williams who can guard one through five, so they can switch everybody on defense. So sometimes that stops him from getting all the statistics he might necessarily get. But... Because obviously, teams are going to want to switch off of him because he he can guard fives as well too. Mm -hmm. So, for me right now, he is my defensive player of the year just because of how insane he has been playing, and he's the best defender on the best defensive team in the league. Very true. And I think that deserves to be awarded as such. He will at the very least be uh, defensive player of the year, but I think you know it's it's time for a guard to win this award. Now it's been Rudy Gobert who will not win it this year, even though. His stats are about the same as when he di actually did win the award. I think uh, some people just have, like, voter fatigue with Rudy Gobert, especially with just, you know, some of his playoff performances. So people are getting tired of voting for him. They don't want the Eiffel Tower to win again. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, with Giannis, yeah, I think it's a little bit of voter fatigue, but I also think that Marcus Smart deserves it, and I think it's time we kind of switch it up and give it to a guard this year. I think he's been playing amazing, and, and he's, the best, he's the best guard defender in the league. Now, keep in mind, it would be Draymond if he had never gotten hurt. He was the best defender in the league by far the first half of the season. Mm -hmm. So, kind of sucks for him. He couldn't get that award again. But I think Marcus Smart deserves it. He's been playing his ass off on defense for the entire eight years he's been in Boston. So, that's my pick. And, and, you, and you said it too. I mean, best defensive player on the best defensive team. The Boston Celtics, phenomenal defensive team this year. I mean, they at per 100 position, possessions, they hold the opponents to 90.3 points, I believe. Which is unbelievable. Which is crazy low. That's like 14 points below the league average. Yeah. Um, they're, they're, the difference between them and, like, the third best defensive team in the league is, like, the same difference between the third best defensive team in the league and, like, the 30th. Like, it's crazy how much they're just, like, better than other teams. Mm -hmm. The Mavs are right up there, too. So, shout out to the Mavs. They've been playing unreal defense as well, too. But they don't have that necessarily – like singular player mm -hmm. or two. They've, yeah, just, they've yeah. just been playing 
overall really well. Marcus Smart, just the way he leads the attack on defense. I mean, he just flies around the court. The, the Celtics, the, the trademark, they love to switch everything and just make, make things hard and congested mm -hmm. uh, for, for, off, for offenses. Uh, Marcus Smart averaging 5.0 steals or deflections per game. Uh, this is a guy that he's willing to die for loose balls. Oh, yeah. he, he will make hustle plays. He's been doing that since his college days. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, he's exciting to watch. Uh, at, honestly, at, from as a defensive player, like sometimes, like on possessions, the Celtics are playing. I'll just watch Marcus Smart play defense because it's a beautiful sight to see. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he he is that guy, and I would love to see a guard finally win Defensive Player of the, player of the Year. Um, Speaking of another guard uh, to talk about, I love to talk about Marcus Smart. I can talk about Marcus Smart all day long. He's one of my favorite Celtics ever. But uh, to get back to the Heat and Raptors game, another guard that's been playing extremely well at defense is Fred Van Vliet. Mm -hmm. And he's even shorter than Marcus Smart, which, making it, which makes it even more impressive on what he's doing on the defensive end as well, too. He is in talks for making that second team all NBA defense as well, too. So I'm wondering, do you, do you think he'll end up making the second team defense? Because obviously Toronto's defense is very good as well, too. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's one of the leaders of that. Obviously, Siakam's a good defender. They just got a lot of they just got a lot of players with length that are very good at defense. Um, but Van Bleet, as a shorter player, I mean, that low center of gravity. It's hard to you know it's hard to dribble on him. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard to drive on him. He he he's so low enough he can get his hand in there and poke the ball away. Um, he has a bunch of steals, a uh, bunch of deflections, stuff like that. He gets in the passing lanes. He's just a smart defender. I, I personally would like to see him on my second team defense. Do you think he makes a second team defense? Uh, I, I love Van Fleet. I mean, an, another short guard that mixes things up and, you know, pokes the ball away. Love all that. I don't think he's making either the, well, the second team or first team uh, mm -hmm. defensive uh, or all defensive team. Um, I mean, if we, if we just look at positional, I mean, Drew Holiday, there's just so many guards, uh, Drew Holiday, McCall Bridges, Derek White. I yep. mean, there, there's so many guards that are just playing outstandingly on the defensive end um, that, it, that it's tough to, to make a case for, for, for Fred Van Fleet as well as he's been playing. Yeah, Bridges Bridges right up there as well, too. It, it, it's just tough to take away from so many of these guys. You know, I, I wish we could have four all-team defenses because <laughs> yeah. they're playing amazing. Um, hopefully Van Vliet can at least make a make an All NBA team. Though I'd like to see him maybe get in that third team or third team slot. It'll be it'll be tough. It'll be tough because obviously the guard position is pretty pretty loaded uh, nowadays in the NBA. But I'd like to see him make it because you know him finally getting to be an All Star and you know if he could really get a an All NBA team and prove himself as you know one of the top 15 or 20 players in the league. Mm -hmm. I think that, that was, that's an honor he deserves at some point in his career. Um, now, one more question, because I'm trying to wrap it up here. But Scotty Barnes, you know, everybody's talking about Evan Mobley. Everybody's talking about Evan Mobley. Everybody's mm -hmm. talking about Cade Cunningham. You know, and, and those are obviously, those guys are playing out of their minds right now. But Scotty Barnes, he leads the rookies in points and assists. Mm. Overall, isn't that crazy to think about? Yeah. He leads all, and now that's obviously just because he's been playing consistently all year long. And I don't think, he's probably only missed like a game or two. But he leads all rookies in points and assists. Does he have a case for rookie of the year here? Because he's playing on a winning team. Like Barnes, yeah. you could say, he's contributing more to actual wins. He doesn't necessarily have the assists and points per game as the other guys do. Oh, they so put overall points, like over, in, yeah, okay, in terms overall of the long points stretch, and okay, overall right. assists, um, because I think he's just played more games than those other guys. But you know, does he, I mean, I don't want to hear much chatter of him for rookie of the year. Do you think he has a? Do you think he has a case? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that is an impressive stat, but I mean, I think the the value that guys like Mobley and and Cunningham have, Cunningham have on their teams. Uh, it's tough to really throw a, a guy like like Barnes into that mix uh, when, when those guys are playing so well. Uh, I, I, I just Cade Cunningham, I mean, he's just been great all mm -hmm. year. Um, Clutch, too. Yeah, Mobley. They're, star they're starting to win more. Yeah. And, and, and he's doing it with a bad roster. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah, and, and Mobley. Uh, and there's talks of him being second all-defensive team. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, that, that, uh, Scotty Barnes, uh, he's – 
going to be a force to be reckoned with for years to come in the league. But yeah. uh, at this point, uh, rookie of the year, I'm, I'm giving the nod to probably Kate Cunningham. Really? Yeah. I'm still probably going to go with Mobley. Still probably going to go with Mobley. Uh, just because he's been pretty dominant and the defense is unbelievable as well, too. Um, and just contributing to a lot of wins there. And that Cleveland team, if you take away some of those injuries, you could argue that they'd still be a top three seed in the East, and he would be their first or second best player, which mm -hmm. is kind of unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, we haven't seen that in Cleveland since LeBron James. No, I'm not comparing him to LeBron James. Mm -hmm. don't, don't, don't get mad at me. But um, Cavaliers haven't been good since LeBron James. That's true. That's true. LeBron, I, mean, I mean, honestly, think about it. It seems like forever ago, but it wasn't really that long ago. You know, it was only four years. Yeah. Well, know, well they, yeah. they were in the finals, which is crazy to think about. Yeah, but as soon as he leaves, it's they just, just in, pff, instantly yeah. a But then you get guys team. like Evan Mobley and, and Kyrie Irving. So you know, we'll, we'll see who, uh, who who gets the next batch of guys. Um, overall, though, the rookie the rookie class has been pretty unbelievable. But all right. Let's wrap it up on that. Uh, thank you for coming on, Danny. Pleasure. Always a pleasure, my friend. Pleasure. Um, Heat 114, Raptors 109. Heat win four in a row. They're staying in that number one seed. Raptors, uh, you know, towards the, bo towards the bottom of the playoff standings in the East. But I don't know if anybody really wants to play them because they have played pretty well lately. Yeah. But all righty, we got one more guest for you. It is going to be BG coming after the break. You're not going to want to miss that, so stay tuned. All right, welcome back. I'm Drew Emmerich. You already know that. I am joined by BG. You saw him on the All Star Break episode of the Fast Break. Um, that was a hell of an episode. Obviously, we had explosions and, and clowns, and, and I'm excited for what's going to happen today. Uh, we got a miniature uh, biggie. Uh, right here, so Notorious is the theme today, and you know who was acting Notorious on Sunday was my man, Luka Doncic, and that's the game we're going to be talking about right now. Uh, Mavs versus Bucks in the land of cheese up in Milwaukee. Uh, Bucks took out a nice eight-point lead. You know, Drew Holiday was actually going kind of crazy in the first. Um, you know, he was kind of making threes. He was doing, like, hook shots, stuff I've never even really seen him do before. He was just playing awesome, awesome, and then obviously his normal lockdown defense like he does. Second quarter, Dallas went on a 10-0 run with about four minutes left, taking a slight lead into halftime. You could thank that a lot to Luka Doncic, but a little bit of everybody. The Mavs have a really solid, nice, uh, you know, depth going on right now, and Dinwiddie's been playing very well for them. Um, it was the Giannis show in the third quarter. You know, we've all seen Giannis do this. He kind of just takes over the game. Uh, he was taking over with his mid-range game, which I really liked in this because he's been working on that since he got into the league. You know, obviously his three-point shooting's got a little bit better. He's a, one of the most dominant people we've ever seen next to the hoop. But his mid-range has gotten significantly better, so shout out to him for working on that. That's why he's in the MVP conversation. That's why he's in the MVP conversation again. Um, you know, uh, then Luca honestly had a great second half as well, too. And, you know, he kind of got the game to his pace. And basically the Mavs kind of just slowly pulled away after that. And he kind of does what the greats have done, the LeBron James, the Jordan. He just gets the game at his pace and just dominates it. You know, the Mavs, uh, let's talk about Luca: 32 points, 8 rebounds, 15 assists, MVP-type numbers from him. Uh, Powell, Norm Powell, shout it to him. He uh, dropped 22 points and 13 rebounds, probably his best game of the entire year for the Mavs. And then Jalen Brunson dropped in a nice 15 points. The Bucks, Giannis, of course, trying to stay in that MVP race with 28 points, 10 rebounds. Holiday, like I said, had a good game, 29, 20 points, 9 assists. Bobby Porter's dropping in 17 and 8. And then Middleton, not a great game for uh, the Bucks' second best player. He only had 11 points this game. Probably the, you know, if he plays a better game, they probably have a much better chance of winning. They probably do win if he has a normal Middleton game. So tough one for him. The Mavs ended up winning 118 to 112. But like I said, Luca kind of takes the pace down to his speed, and the, they sh the Mavs shot 27 free throws, 
And basically, that's how Luca kind of just slows it down. He's great at drawing fouls. He's just, you're either going to contact him or he's going to get an open shot. And he uses his body so well to where you're either going to foul him or you're going to have to back off a little bit, and then he gets a look at the free look at the basket. So that's a tough one for him. Now, BG, my friend here, he is a, a referee. So I kind of wanted to bring him on and talk about what did you think about Luca and the referees in, last, er, in Sunday night's game? Well, um, Drew, to be honest, the NBA does not prioritize referees. And that's, that is fine. Like, that, if you're a referee going into the NBA today, you have to go to the G League. You have to go over in Europe. You have to get experience um, if you want to become a referee in the NBA. And you have to realize you know, any morals that you have, you have to like take that back. I know it sounds super <laughs> wrong, but it, it's true. Um, when you, you have to realize that you're much bigger in the organization as a whole. And um, like, it doesn't help young players that are on the Mavs that make simple, tiny mistakes like lane violations at, at the free throw line, um, when you know they're, they're they're jumping at the ball, or you have, I mean, veterans like Luca who you know does a backcourt violation. It doesn't help when you don't call violations like that. I get it when you don't call fouls, when you know you don't want these star players fouling out. But it's the simple violations that you know, as a college hoops fan, as a high school basketball fan, it just kind of drives me crazy. Um, and. You were talking about right before we were uh, on Snapchat, and you know, do you think the Mavs have a shot at winning the Western Conference? Mm -hmm. You know what? They're I, let me pull it up here. They are they are up to the three seed now. They're the four seed, I believe. Maybe? I believe they're the four right now. They, they're, yeah, they're sitting at the four seed, yeah. and then Denver's right behind them mm -hmm. um, in that capacity. So they're going to play Denver. So when the Mavs go up against the Nuggets, and you have moments where there's these simple violations that it could get a, it could get away with them. And and Jokic, like that guy, will capitalize on any mistake that yeah. you make as an offense or defense. So, mm -hmm. um, key pay key attention to that. Um, I think you know if I'm Mark Cuban, obviously you want the the Mavericks to win every single uh, every single year, get a championship. But um, really, I think what these guys need the most right now is they need to get some action in the playoffs. They need to see officiating at a higher level. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think um, partly with uh, Lamello, is it Lamello Lonzo? Um, who went to uh, Lithuania in place for the Charlotte Hornets right Lamello. now? Lamello. Lamello. Yeah. I think that Lamello's game got significantly better, better playing in Europe because of the officiating. Yeah. And, and, and if you're a player this in the, in the league right now, I would go to Europe versus the G League. I mean, that might be a, a hot take, um, but really I think that the officiating is just on a different level and it creates better players. Yeah, I mean, that's true. And, and when things slow down in the playoffs and you're allowed to get away with a little bit more contact, as you know as you're driving to the basket but also they're not going to be you know letting other stuff slide in a weird kind of push and pull way that the playoffs are officiated differently now luca is obviously a master at this and that's why he single-handedly pretty much got two games away from the clippers when he played them last year so luca's on a different level and and i agree with what you're saying they're not going to be getting but there's always a superstar treatment throughout the regular season with players. Like Luka, LeBron, you know, just any of your top ten players. Steph, maybe John now, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how he's officiated. But they're just going to get more calls than other players. Yeah. And it's just the way it is. I mean, it started with Michael Jordan back in the day. Yeah. Jordan's going to get more calls than a guy off the bench every single day of the week. It's just is, is first of all they called it the Jordan rules. Now it's just kind of the superstar rules in general. Yeah. They're going to get more calls and they're also going to get away with a lot more. LeBron James travels all the time. Are they going to call it? Absolutely not, because 
it's LeBron James. And they, they just, you know, he's good, he's good for the product. He's good for the money. So they don't want to see him foul out. They don't want to see him get called for stuff. They want him putting up stats. They want him winning games so that they're, you know, the product is better on TV and they make more money. Yeah, but I think the key thing, what I'm trying to get to the viewers is, is like the officiating is on a different level. You could see these players and say, you know, you could look at a, at a, a Giannis or a LeBron, you know, LeBron's trying to get the uh, points Sc title, scoring title, sc sc yeah. scoring title. Like when you get into the playoffs, it's a different mode. It's a different view set. So when you are, you know, sitting on the couch, like, eh, I think uh, uh, X, Y, Z, uh, this team's going to beat this team. Yeah, 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 yeah. Based off of what you saw in the regular season, mm -hmm. That's not necessarily going to happen. You have to think of it uh, with a bigger picture. You got to look at it as an ecosystem. It's not just the players on the court, but the officials, um, you know, uh, the hype around what the city is feeling like, especially with those home crowd atmospheres. And mm -hmm. that's what I wanted to get at was it was Dallas coming into Milwaukee. And really, it, it reminded me, I mean, this, you might find this funny, but it reminded the, the way the Bucks handled that situation. That is a playoff caliber team that they went up against. This was a playoff game. Yeah, basically. basically you know? And they reminded me of like a two-cylinder Hyundai in East L.A. <laughs> backfiring. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It was like there are moments where they are the true three seed in the Western Conference. Mm -hmm. But when you have a hungry Mavericks team, you have that spunk that's jumping at the, the free throw line getting those lane violations because they're just like, oh, we're playing the Bucks, we're playing the 2021 MVP. They're just more physical. I exactly. They took it to them and they won. And, and, that's, and that's what uh, you got to look at moving forward. I think the teams that are the hungriest, especially in the Western Conference with the Grizz, mm -hmm. like I, if you are hungry in the playoffs this year, I think you can go far. And um, to get to that, um, we're going to try to keep it down to like a minimum, like we're going to yeah. not go too much on a tangent. And to help us with that, we, we're going to have two subjects and you only have to eat two crackers. So okay. my guy here, I don't know if you know this about Drew Ambergy, he loves Triscuits. So Triscuit, if you're watching out there, you know, pick, pick the guy up, man. I don't, um, I don't know if we got to blur that out or we'll, 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 see. we'll, 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 we'll hit talks. it. Anywho, I will sign an NIL deal, so, so keep that we, in mind. We got some wasabi, and we're going to oh, put it on okay. the Triscuits. And I, I hate spicy food. And I do, too. I, don't, I am not a big hot guy fan. You know what? You can pick your poison, my friend. We got the wasabi. Um, but I we did not also, know this was going to happen. So. But shout out to Buffalo Wild Wings. It's we just, got it's ha just habanero it. heat. BG might have to end the show for me, so we'll, we'll see. I might be in the bathroom crying. Oh, we, yeah, we got the trash can close, too. But no, I'm not going to throw up. Oh. Well, actually, I might. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, if worse comes to worse, we do have some ice cream to back you up. Okay. But, um, mm, yeah. Not bad, huh? That's not bad. I mean, it would be good if, it, if we had chicken wings, but, you know, we're going to – we're, we're, we're high school, or we're college students. So. We got Trevor running out back to go grab a chicken. So <laughs> we'll see if he can get back in time and cook it up. Um, yeah, so basically, I'm going to ask you, who do you think is going to, who's going to come away in that Eastern Conference Final? Who's, who, yeah, think about your answer before you're, you're saying it, so you have some time to. Well, I, I already have my mind made Whoa, 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 whoa okay. okay. And who's going to be that sleeper team that, you know, you got to watch out for. Well, you know what was crazy is before I even decided on this game to pick, I was saying, why is nobody talking about the Mavs as a sleeper to come out of the West? Mm. And a lot of times people say it's their depth. They don't have a real good second star. They don't whoa, have a real good, whoa, 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 whoa. Real good second star. All right, well, we'll I'm talk. saying if Luka is playing like this, I don't know if it matters. He might go on a, he might go on a tangent and just, not a tangent, but might just go on a, rampage and go through the entire West. So they're my sleeper in the West. My favorite, I still got to stick with the Suns. They're playing out of their minds. In the East, my favorite, like I said, Miami. Oh, my oh. sleeper. Hold oh, on. What? You're going to, you're going to. You, you asked me a question. You're going to, oh, well, I'm going to ask you the question and then you're going to help the people. You got, you got to say it in a timely manner, my okay, friend. Okay, okay. All right. Do you want the hot sauce or you want the wasabi? I'll go with the hot sauce. Okay. 
Wasabi just, at least that's got some flavor to it. Can you, can you hold it up for me after you pour it on this Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, that's a good, that's a good dollop. Good dollop. Dollop a daisy. Yeah, not, no sponsoring. <laughs> so I got, what do, what do you want me to do? Okay, so who do you think is the team in the Western Conference that's sleeping on? Like, and why? Being slept on? Being slept on, all right. You, you want me to eat it and then answer? Yeah. Okay. So I think the team that's being slept on the most is the Dallas Mavericks. For reasons we just ooh, 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 went over <laughs> previously, because I think Luca could go on a run where he just torches the entire league, drops like 35 a game, especially, oh, I'm getting the hiccups now, when he, uh, you know, just scores a lot of points, and he's been playing really good defense lately, too, and I think he could probably just take over, and if Jalen Brunson steps up, especially with the way Dinwiddie's been playing, hitting big shots, I think that they could actually go on a real run here, and, you know, if the Warriors aren't fully healthy, and if anything happens, you know, to the Suns, you know, one injury to their big guys, and it's wide open for the Mavs to win the West. Mm. Okay, I handled that fairly well. That was that was that was that was bearable. We have some ice cream for you if you you know need to cleanse the palate. Um, nah. you're good. Okay. I'm great. All right. Um, by the way, I've come a long way because I used to not eat spicy food at all. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. I, let's do the wasabi and let's get dangerous. I'm I'm gonna go with the wasabi and uh, I I got you. Oh yeah, eat the Trisket. Is that good enough? Would you say that's a good enough dollop for me? Yeah, that's a good dollop. That's a lot of wasabi. That's a lot of wasabi. I just want to put 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 that out there. All right. Oh. <clears throat> so I'm I'm not as you know technically savvy as you are with the whole you know Western Conference or you know with NBA in general. So who's your sleeper in the East? All right, here we go. I'm I'm yeah. Oh boy. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Um, in the Western Conference. Eastern. Oh, we're going to go Eastern? Oh, you want to go Western? Pick your Western. Oh, uh, they'll go Eastern. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. <coughs> uh, if, I, if I'm Boston and I currently have the two seed, I really don't want the two seed. Oh. <laughs> it's so much for Tommy. It's so much. Okay, I can't, I can't watch him do it alone, so I'm going to eat mine. Oh, I got barbecue sauce in my eye. <laughs> oh, my God, stay over there. Stay over there. I need the ice cream. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> oh, holy shit. Oh, the ice cream won't open. <laughs> um. Oh. Uh, um. By the way, this is mac and cheese ice cream. What? So I don't really like mac it. Mac and cheese ice cream, dude? Well, that was the whole point was like, well, choose your poison. Do you want to stick with the hot sauce? Oh. Okay. <laughs> this. <laughs> Or do you want to eat mac and cheese ice cream? Thank you. <sighs> Thank you, BG, for coming on the show. Well, just, okay, I'll, oh I'll leave God. you on this. No, dude, I <laughs> if, you're the Eastern, if you're in the Eastern Conference Finals and you have the two seed, I really wouldn't want it because you have <clears throat> Cleveland and Atlanta that are going to vibe for the seven seed. And really, uh, I would rather have a Toronto at six seed or the Bulls at a five seed. I think Toronto's just absolutely horrendous. When Giannis, when Giannis is like, if Giannis does play Toronto in the in the <laughs> Toronto. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll as, finish this one up, buddy. As yeah. a three seed, as a three seed, uh, <laughs> playing Toronto, 
Like, Giannis is going to bring the whole dang alphabet, and it's just going to school them. So, I really, I wouldn't want the two seed in the East. Uh. Yeah. Well, you heard it here first. You don't want the two seed in the East. Um, thank you, BG, for coming on. Always just an absolute pleasure. You know, you're a legend. Wait, wait, wait. Before, oh, God. Before but, you go. Uh, this has been this week's. I have a present for you. Okay. This is a Larry Bird pop. Thank you for being such a good sport. Thank you for having no me on. No way, dude. This, this is all sick. for you. Thank you. Holy of course. shit. Put That's it on. Awesome. Put it on the set. You know. Okay. Uh, um. Well. Oh my gosh. Happy birthday to me. Uh. Stay tuned. I need water. Another week of the fast break coming at you next week. Uh. Thank you to all the guests that came on. Uh. Like, subscribe, follow. All right. Have a good night. <laughs> Bye. Go Cougs. Go Cougs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, we, we, yeah.